The Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 5th at 7 p.m. in the main meeting room of the town offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. On the application of Bella Brussel for a special permit to own, operate a bed and breakfast at her home at 60 Grave Street, South Deerfield, Mass. So right now we have a, we have a quorum. We have four of us. Uh, generally, if we um, go to a vote, you're, re you're required to have a unanimous vote. Normally it's one out and, and four, four in. So I, I'm gonna ask you if you'd like to proceed or would you like to reschedule? Okay, so with that, um, can you just please tell us what your intentions are? And uh, the way this will work is the, the petitioner will tell us what their intentions are, and then I'll ask for people to speak in favor, and then I'll ask speaker, people to uh, speak in opposition, and then we'll, then we'll do some kind of deliberating, and then we'll do some kind of voting. So uh, just please be um, uh, patient, and I'll try to answer stuff, and please also direct questions to uh, the board rather than to the individuals and, and we'll we'll transpose back and forth. Okay? You want so, me to stay here? No, I want you to go there and I want you to tell me all about uh, this bed and breakfast, where it, where it is, where's 60 Grave Street, uh, okay. what, what all your operations and everything else. Well, 60 Grave Street's right here in town, very close by, and um, we are purchasing it. We're in the process and we should have it by mid-June. We should be there by mid-June. And um, my plan is to have basically a one room available as a B&B. &B. There's a nice spot behind the, that, that's right there that would be perfect for it. And I have lived in Deerfield since 2004. And um, for the last three years, I've had a B&B &B on River Road, a uh, two bedroom B&B &B in my home on River Road. And um, it's basically, uh, uh, I've never had any complaints or any problems based on what I've been doing for three years. And um, it's not a very, um, during the, from about, uh, let's see, from about May through October, it, there's some activity. But from November through April, it, there's almost none. So it's not that busy a business. But it syncs very nicely and integrates with the private schools when like, they have a graduations and, and when people are bringing their kids to look at the schools. Uh, I'll often have people, and I've had a really wide range of very interesting people from all over the world, actually, because of that. And um, so that's my plan, is to have a one room, uh, a one room available. So who owns the property currently? Uh, Deanne Moore and uh, they signed off on this. Deanne, I'm just asking where, who, who the current owners are. Deanne Moore and uh, Lockwood. Her husband's name is Lockwood. And how many um, bedrooms are in the building currently? There are four. Are you are you talking about an addition or using one of the current rooms? One of the current rooms. Okay. And what type of a parking do you have? There's a driveway, there's a huge, a very wide garage. Um, and we only have one car. We're planning to have one car. And then there's a, a driveway that would accommodate probably four cars, but I don't expect more than one car at a time, most of the time. Most of the time is only one car per, per people coming <laughs> in general. So I found it to be a pretty low, low impact kind of thing, and it's not all the time. The reason I'm attracted to it is it's not all the time. Uh, and uh, I think it's been a benefit to the town in general, because a lot of the people who come, uh, you know, are eating out and spending money in the town because they're, most of them are either on vacation to be leaf peepers. That's the other time when it gets a little active, when the leaves, you know, in October. Do you pay any kind of in tax or? Uh, you don't have to in Massachusetts. If you don't have more than three rooms, there's no tax. I, I, that's my understanding. So there's no. So the answer tax. is no. You do not pay any taxes no. for for being an innkeeper or. or no, because B &B. I think you have to go over a certain number of rooms to okay. hit that mark. 
Any board, uh, quite, any more questions from the board? Anybody have a question? So the house has got four bedrooms? Well, there's four, I would say in the house, there's three bedrooms and two and a half baths. And behind the garage, there's a bedroom and a bath. Okay, and the house says dining room, living room, uh, besides the three bedrooms in the main yes. part? Yes, yes. Any other rooms? Uh, there's a little office room off the dining room, living room. Basement finished, unfinished? Basement is basement. It's not finished. Okay. I'm, I, I, nobody's going to be down there. <laughs> that wouldn't be comfortable. Um, and you feel that the driveway in its current state is going to be, um, it will have ease of use for for the people living I here think as so. well as any guests? Because I, I, I think so. Uh, easily an extra car could be in the driveway. And you know, we had thought about having a roommate. If we had a roommate, we'd have a car there all the time. But we'd prefer this kind of use because it's more fun. You meet all these interesting people. And also, there's not a car there all the time. So it's less, uh, less impactful, I think, than an extra person sharing the house with us. So which bedroom would you dedicate to the bed and breakfast? I think the one behind the garage, because it, it's a nice big room. Separate from the house. It's a little bit, it's across the walkway to the garage. It's a little separate. So you have to go outside to get in there? Yeah. So it's like a, all right. But it's, it's basically, it's not under the, it's not contiguous with the rest of the living area. Correct. Well, everything is connected. It's all under one roof, but there's a walkway between the house and that section. But you have to go outside to, to use that? Yes. Okay, that's my point. Is it a single egress? No, there's two, two doors into that space. One from the outside and one from where? Both from the outside. There's one, the, the shape of it is long and it has a very nice peaked roof, it's pretty, and then there's a door at that end and a door at this end. There's two doors. No door from the house. Well, the door from the house is uh, right opposite the door, one of the doors. So you're going to feed people there? Uh, well, they'll probably come in and have breakfast, yeah. So they've got to go outside to come or to Or they can house. have breakfast there, either way. I'll bring it in on a tray is what I'm thinking. But that's the only area that would be rented out. Yeah, I'm not thinking, yes, I, that is the only area. I'm not planning to have it um, like other bedrooms used. We're going to use those as offices and living space for our, myself and my husband. And what kind of signage are you proposing? I'm not thinking of a sign, really. Other, the only th thing I thought of for a sign was maybe to just have a, a little stake in the ground with a little sign that says Bela's or something, just so they know they're there. But I'm not thinking of the bigger sign that's three by whatever. I forgot what's allowed, but it's three by three. I'm not thinking of that on this kind of endeavor. It's too residential. Ben, you have any questions? I don't. Ask Ronnie to slide the uh, application over, the actual application. May I, may I just ask, I'm not sure I know who everybody, I know who exactly everybody is. Okay. So my name is Ron Bahanowitz. I am the chair of the right. zoning board. And okay. to my right is Ben Wadman, and oh, he's, okay, the, ben. he's the clerk. clerk. Okay. Linda Dumas is I a know Linda member, from River Road. and Robert Deckert, the uh -huh. third, second, the third, the third. third. The third. It says is, I printed you out, but I just wasn't sure who was is here. The, <laughs> is there. Okay. Um, Thank you. I, um, just give me one minute. I want to look something up before I have sure. another question for you. That's a CRVD district, is that correct? But that means it's a smaller, tighter space that's in town. Okay, um, any other questions from the board? Oh. Mr. Kalaszewski, any questions? Well, I see a copy of the house plan, I can go get it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, 
All right, so I'm going to ask for anybody in the public that would like to speak in favor. So I'd, I'd like to say just a few words if I could. Sure, Mr. Brown. So I'm um, Bela's husband, Stephen. And as Bela mentioned, for the last three years until we moved recently, Bela was running a B and b out on River Road. And we did have a sign out there, a big three by three sign, because we were out on a long country road. But we, as Bela mentioned, we're not planning on any side or something very small on Grave Street. Um, as Bela mentioned, we had no problems with any of the neighbors for the three years that we were there. And it was really kind of a wonderful experience. And I think you can get a sense already that Bela is an extremely sociable person. And as soon as we move in, she'll know everybody. I'm a writer. I tend to stay in my room more, right? Uh, but uh, pretty soon, we will all know Bela. Um, one of the nice things about the place is that it, the entire house is handicap accessible. So we're thinking we may get some um, people who want to rent the uh, because it's handicap accessible. Also, I, I don't know if they would make it completely clear, but we're not planning to use any of the rooms in the house for the b and It's really just a separate, what might be in another place called an in-law, because it's almost standalone beyond the garage. It's 600 square feet. It's a beautiful space that has views of Sugarloaf at the back. And we think it'll be a really nice space to house people. That's the only space we can use for the B&B. So, are you all set? Yeah. Okay. So. All right, so I'm going to talk. Uh, anybody that would like to talk in opposition and or have a comment, if you just please state your name and then, then tell me. Um, and please forgive me because I'm trying to multitask. I'm trying to find something in the book at the same time, but I am listening. I, mean, I can start. I haven't had an opportunity to um, submit a letter. Okay. Um, Do I need to sit here or? Sure, and, and if you would, if you can either paraphrase, can you either paraphrase or just? I'm just gonna read it. That's wonderful. <laughs> can you just see your name? My name is Lori Roach. Um, my husband and I live at um, 65 Grave Street and we are the current owners there. Um, and we are um, opposed to having a special permit application um, for a bed and breakfast. Um, we have some concerns that I'd like to share. Um, it's definitely nice to hear what you have to say and um, to have some clarification. But um, the end of Grave Street, where um, we live, is a residential neighborhood. There are many families with small children. There are children, walkers, runners, and bikers. We're concerned about the additional traffic that would result from people coming and going from the bed and breakfast. In addition, this road is narrow. At this end of the road, it has no sidewalks. Uh, even on the best conditions, it's really hard for two cars to come and go. Uh, throw a, um, a lawnmower, you know, someone there doing lawns or snow, it's really hard to pass by. Also, it's a long, narrow road. Um, even with people that live on the road and know the street, they tend to go pretty quickly. Um, so people who are unfamiliar with the street, I would expect them to go even faster. I'm often out there having to talk to people go by. Um, I have young children, my neighbors have young children, um, so that's a huge concern for me, um, the traffic and just the comings and goings. Um, this is also a neighborhood where you feel really comfortable letting your children roam freely. It's a neighborhood where people know and we really care about one another. This is a neighborhood where we look out for one another. Um, a bed and breakfast invites as you said, a lot of people from all over the world, all over the place, and I'm sure there's most of the people that are come are lovely and you have a lot of great interactions, um, but it does bring some reservation for us, um, having all this coming and going in and out and whatnot. Um, also having a small business in a residential neighborhood um, can change the character and the feeling of a neighborhood. Um, this part of the road is a single family um, neighborhood one of the great things and a lot of the reasons um, people come to Grave Street and Eastern Ave in this area is because it's in town. Um, we can walk to the schools, we can walk to the libraries, as you said, we can walk to, you know. Um, so I see that as a benefit for the families um, that are there. Um, as a teacher that lives in this town, I, you know, I would hope that we encourage um, more families to move to this area. And I don't want the, the neighborhood to change and the character to change where, um, you know, if a house goes up for sale, 
um, that that would be a deterrent for other families coming in. So really changing the safe single family environment um, is a worry for my husband and myself. Uh, you've answered some of my um, questions that I had, but some of the questions were how many employees will there be there? Um, is it gonna be owner occupied? Um, Will you be um, serving meals? What's gonna be the general operation of the business? Hours, how many rooms are gonna be rented? Um, questions about how it's gonna be maintained, snow removal, trash removal, if you're having deliveries and whatnot. Um, just guest policies, what will those rules be? Um, the food, uh, there is a pool in the backyard, just safety concerns around the pool. Um, what else? Just about noise management. Um, again, it is a, it's primarily a, a, a quiet end of the road. Um, you know, if you have people, even if you're just renting to one, if they're out in the, the you know, we're worried about noise. Um, if, they, if there's gatherings, how will that be dealt with? Um, and just really, again, looking how can we ensure the safety of the families and the children mm -hmm. um, due to the traffic and the increase in traffic and also just pets and a pet policy. Um, so at this time, we are feeling uncomfortable about um, the bed and breakfast um, and just um, how it might change the character, mm -hmm. the feeling, and the safety for yeah. the families in this neighborhood. So. Okay, great. Let me let the other folks speak as well. Oh, okay. All right. So anybody else like to speak in opposition? Sure. I, I, I'm Nate Malloy. I submitted a letter. Um, in part because there wasn't a lot of information to go on. And I'm submitting a, something different. Um, it's more a list of conditions. <coughs> Excuse me, Kip. Yep. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Nate Malloy. I live at 67 Grave Street. I've been there about two and a half years. And I, you know, I'll echo a lot of what Lori said. I think, you know, you know, I, I wrote a letter strongly opposing this because there wasn't any detail in the in the application. I really still feel that the application was incomplete because it didn't mention, you know, anything about number of rooms, a management plan, or you know, anything really. It just said to operate a bed and breakfast. Right, right. And so, I think you know the fact that if the rental is limited to the one bedroom in the accessory apartment, um, I'm okay with that. I think that it wouldn't necessarily. Um, be detrimental, but I think there's mission creep, you know, at their last bed and breakfast, they then, you know, after they received a special permit for a bed and breakfast, they wanted to, you know, they added a meditation center. And so, you know, if a bed and breakfast is allowed, I want, you know, I have a number of conditions that, you know, the, you know, be the one bedroom in the accessory apartment, the use, you know, expires upon change of ownership and that there be no special permits for classes or workshops, you know, because this is a residential neighborhood. So I don't want mission creep here. You know, I'm concerned that the, the use of the property becomes non-residential when there's a special permit issued. And so every home on this end of Gray Street and Eastern Ave is residential. It's not, you know, non-residential. It's not commercial or something else. And so, you know, I'm, I'm worried about mission creep. Um, you know, I do think the outdoor dining and um, a lot of that will be mitigated if it's only one room rented. But I think that there are concerns about, you know, the... Everything's one level, so I think it's great that it's accessible, but the, the in-law apartment, you know, has direct access to the deck, to the pool. There is a fence around the pool, but um, it's pretty open, so I would just be concerned that, you know, there's, and there could be some safety issues. And, I, you know, the houses are, you know, cheek and jowl, you know, they're, you know, 10 feet off the property line, 15 feet off the property line. And so I would want to have, if there's, you know, outdoor dining limited to, you know, end at, you know, 7 p.m. or, you know, that there be no live entertainment. I don't want, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think, you know, houses have parties anyway, so there, that can be occasional, you know, just part of living. But I don't want to have, you know, I don't want this to become something. It is a big house. It's an open floor plan. So I could see, you know, you saying, oh, I'd like to have, you know, I can hold workshops for 20 people and we can have, you know, you, know, you could seat 30 people on the deck out back. I don't really want to have, you know, banquets here or weddings or anything like that. Um, I don't think the neighborhood can accommodate it. Um, so, I mean, I, I feel like if, if there are some of these conditions that are listed here, you know, could be, you know, our place on a special permit, I'm, I'm okay with it. I do think, I just want to make sure that we keep the, you know, the general appearance of the residents. So, you know, we say no, you know, no signs in the front yard. I mean, we don't have, you know, except for the CESA sign right by the, the corner there, there's no signs on Grave Street. And so if there are home-based businesses, it's not apparent. You know, no one advertises it. You know, there's no lights on at night. Uh, it's just, you know, a quiet residential street. So, 
you know, as long as that can be maintained, um, I think just renting run room doesn't, you know, impact that. So um, that's, I think that's, I've covered it. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney. Yes. We live next door to this house and we have to give a permit for the sewer water to go through our land because the people that own the land in back of this house would not allow them to put the pipe in to where everybody's water goes down into the brook. And I'm just concerned of how much more water mm -hmm. this is going to make in front of my house and if it's going to go into my cellar. Mrs. Melnick, who, 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 um, who owns Mr. the- Mr. Kalaszewski handled all that. No, but who, who owns the land on um, Eastern Ave that you're, they wouldn't go through or whatever? It was, uh, they didn't own it on Eastern Avenue. It okay. was the uh, Kastebas okay. that, would, uh, that owned the land in back of this, the field. Okay, fields the field, okay. Back that would not allow the pipe to go through their land. Okay. Anything else? And how do we know that this is only going to be, they're only going to rent one room? Mm -hmm. Maybe someone will come with a family and they want more than one room, mm -hmm. then what do you do if it's authorized for one bedroom and then they bring other people? And there's no park, supposedly no parking on either side of Grave Street. So you have to have parking in your driveway or on your lawn. And I don't want parking on my lawn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next door. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else want to speak? Um, thank you, Bella, for your presentation. You. Uh, Dick Floyd, I'm uh, 63 Grave Street, my wife Shirley and myself, uh, right across the street from this property. I'd like to just point out the property itself is oversized for the neighborhood for very legitimate reasons. Um, the, it was built for a handicapped individual. As Bella has indicated, it's handicap accessible. Um, but my experience with bed and breakfast, both staying and also having friends who owned them, is that they are likely to change ownership. And so one of the concerns I would have is that if this permit were to be issued, that it not be a permission, an issue down the road someplace if Bella decides not to have it and somebody mm -hmm. else wants to move in. It's the only house in the neighborhood that would even remotely be considered for, you know, bed and breakfast or any other purpose because everything else is uh, roughly 85 foot uh, road frontage lots, older home, single family, and uh, is some of the older people in the neighborhood. We're just really enjoying the renewal, the young people coming in. And we're very protective of the fact that people should have access, people should be able to uh, have their kids be able to play in the yard and so forth. So anything that generates traffic, no matter what it is, is a concern. Um, I think as far as the uh, concept of a single bedroom, um, like Nate said, I don't think that's a quite the same situation as you know what the house might present if you reverse the process. In other words, if you were to live in the so-called in-law apartment. Yeah. But what are the assurances that that's all that happens? And uh, they can park in the driveway once they know where to park, but if they park in the road while they find that out, they're right across the street from us, and that's where people tend to park. So um, it, it does re create some restriction for us. So uh, we had submitted a letter, I think you have it, um, basically indicating some of our major concerns, and uh, I think they've been talked about here. I don't think there's anything that we offered that is uh, quite, you know, unique beyond that point. But very definitely, um, I'd ask the uh, members of the zoning board to consider the fact that this house is not in character with the neighborhood. And the neighborhood itself is very definitely um, kind of a wonderful um, residential neighborhood experience a very definitely renewal with young families coming in and it's just a great place to be so uh, we're just concerned that 
it not be changed in a way that's going to be uh, negative, either on property value, but more importantly, the safety of the individuals that are already there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Okay. So um, I'm going to just make a couple of statements, and then we're going to deliberate. Could, right. Can I address some of the concerns? You, you can, yes, you can talk to the concerns. Would you rather I do that? You can first? talk to me and tell me all tell right. the well, board. First of all, it's kind of uh, wonderful in a way to see the sense of community in that that so many people came out in a way. I was surprised. And it's going to be, I, I think, uh, a blessing to be part of a community because I haven't been in that kind of situation for a while. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. But to address some of the concerns, when we, we did the, even when we did the B&B where we were, we agreed that we wouldn't be transferring the B&B ever to another. We wouldn't be selling the house as a and b if, if we sell the house, it's just a single family residence. We're not thinking that it's a business that would, you know, and I'm happy if the ZBA wants to put that condition on it. That's fine. Um, I do have policies. I, I'm sorry I didn't like share them with more of the people before because it sounds like there wasn't enough information for them to, for people to understand. But I have, like, for example, I don't, I don't uh, accept children under 12 in general. I just don't want that responsibility. I don't want you know to have to childproof my home or my. I, I don't want the problem you know where you have to be careful of everything the way you do when you have toddlers. Um, I don't, I haven't, I have found in general the people who come are very, are usually, usually a bit older for the most part, except when it's parents are bringing kids to look at the schools and they're very careful people who, who don't uh, drive quickly and who don't, uh, they're just kind of conservative people. And um, I'm not planning on having banquets. I'm not planning on having workshops. I really don't want to do that in this. this. I just want to have a simple one bedroom <laughs> that I can have uh, people stay in. I'm really not at all interested. And I don't think there'll be any extra water or any extra. Uh, we're going to keep the house up the way we would just normally keep a place up and have it look good from the street and have it. Um, so anyway, th those are some of the concerns that were raised. Um, I don't plan on letting anyone cook there or have food there or have parties there. Only breakfast is served. Uh, like someone had put on limit the outdoor from 7 to 7 p.m. I mean, we might have a party because there is a pool. <laughs> So we might have a personal party, but I'm not. I I actually was going to put in my B and B rules and regs uh, that uh, food wasn't going to be brought in there. I mean, okay, I have once or twice had people bring in like a takeout meal or something that they had in their room, but um, I'm not planning on letting any of that get out of hand. That wouldn't be suitable for me either. Um, so I don't think that, I know Nate mentioned mission creep, and I understand that, you know, like the idea of having workshops or turning it into a business, but that's not, not at all what I'm planning. Um, and I am only planning the one room, because I don't want that many people anymore. I only ever had two rooms anyway, so. The question. Now this, you're, you're the only employee. There are no employees, it's right. just me. And there's a question. Um, Bela. Have you taken possession of this house yet? No, June 13th, I think. So it's it's not officially your house yet. Right. June 13th right. is when you expect this to. The current owner signed off papers. on our, uh, you know, having this. Because if I do do it, I would like to get it going in the summer, because the summer is the time when people would, would, would come. The summer and... Uh, Actually, not even that much in the summer, but more the fall and this, and the in the time uh, around graduations and so forth. So so far, I had a request for someone to come uh, stay at the B and B because they didn't know I wasn't doing one, and it was a grandparents coming to the DA graduation, and 
he's elderly, they wanted it to be like handicapped and everything. So I said, maybe next year, <laughs> do you have another kid going there? But um, that's the type of thing I get mostly. Mr. Decker? I had a question. The um, property owner neglected to sign the application. If I, I have a sign. Does the file show the sign? Mm -hmm. We have an application that you signed, but not the property owner. Wait a second. Uh, it's signed here. The owner is copying. I have a copy with her signature. Okay, can you see it? You going to leave that with us? Well, it's the only copy I have with her signature, I think. So. But I can leave it with you if you'd like. So. Are we good for a second? Because I want to make a statement. I just have one more question. Go ahead, Mr. Decker. Side yard between your house and your proposed the structure that exists today and Mrs. Melnick's, how many feet? I'm sorry. How, how many, many feet? feet house to house, Mrs. Melnick? Probably between our house and your house? 30 feet. It's probably, probably 30 feet. 15 feet off the. That's probably only 10 feet. Okay. Yeah, those I would say of, maybe 15. Because they, when they built that house, they went the limits. Is that house a, a single lot, Mrs. Melnick? Yes. All right. Then those Is lots, that, those lots the usually lots had 100 foot frontage. Street. Most of the lots on, Grave, on our end of Grave the Street. The house is 10 foot back. Are almost 400 feet long. This lot is not. It's only half of that. Okay. So, I'm. I'm I good have for, a map here. I'm good right now. So I'm. I'm just going to make a statement or a comment. Okay. So first of all, I am excited to see as many people as the public that came out and and that's what needs to happen when we have situations and uh, I commend uh, you folks for coming in uh, please do not take this negatively Mr. Brule but I think you might have taken the wrong approach or are taking the wrong approach to, to going into it buying a house in a neighborhood and forcing a B&B right out to get go without knowing your neighbors learning your neighbors Mm -hmm. and what they have. We have a criteria that we have to go by to give you a special permit, and all of these things have to be favorable. And that's communication service needs of the facility, traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading, adequate utilities and public service, impact on the neighborhood character, including aesthetics, impact on the natural environment, including visual impacts, potential fiscal impacts, including impact on town services, tax-based employees. So those are the things we have to take into account when we issue this special permit. So what I'm kind of saying right now is, do you want to rethink what you're doing and would you want to take another approach or do you want us to go to a vote? Well, can I have one minute to, to talk to my husband? Yes, you may. <laughs> have to consult with... My partner. Well, um, I think at this point I would withdraw because I, I would like to get to know my neighbors a little better and make sure they were comfortable if we proceeded with this. And if we do withdraw, we'll probably have another person living with us, a roommate. And that's going to be as impactful or more even than having doing what I was planning to do. But um, if I withdraw it, then the only thing is it was kind of expensive to do the whole process, but I probably could redo well, it. Well, it is, but I would say based on I would say based on those characteristics that I read for you, your neighbor's input, um, you know, you can read, you can read between the lines. I, I think based on what you read, w there's no negative impact, frankly. That's well, impact idea. on the neighborhood character, I mean, right here is the neighborhood character. But I don't and, think and, it's going to change the character myself, personally, but I think maybe 
maybe I jumped the gun in terms of not having a chance to meet you and you don't, and I'm not there yet, you know? So... I mean, my thought is I think that, um, you know, Ron, I submitted a letter with a lot of conditions. I feel like if there are conditions put on the permit, I, I'm okay with it, you know, limiting it to the one room and having a number of other things um, as part of attaching the permit. I think that, um, you know, if that's what they want to do and we can, can you know, there are conditions, I think that's fine. Um, to be honest, I feel like, you know, if what Bella said was true in terms of some of the things, you make those conditions and that's, you know, that's the permit. You know, they can't run out the house. They're not going to hold workshops or classes. They're not going to allow outdoor dining. They're not going to have signs in the front yard. I mean, make those conditions and I'm fine with it, you know? Um, I, would, I would agree with Nate. And I mean, I, I don't want you to feel like you're coming to a neighborhood and that we're, we're not a welcoming group of people because we are. And I think the way mm -hmm. what you said that we do have a sense of community and what I wrote in mine is that we are this end of our neighborhood. We we do all know each other and we do. And it's a wide yeah, range like of that. age and we all, you know, look out for one another. We care for one another. We do <laughs> like to see the young families come in. Not that, you know, that's really what the neighborhood is kind of starting to turn into a little bit. Um, I I'm too old. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just. No, they allow us to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're still our favorite neighbors. <laughs> well, if I had a spider, you're more of a Can so I ask I, the board? I think, of, yeah, I think I, the I, point is, is that when you get a, a letter in the mail exactly. um, that I'm is, you know, certified, and you don't know who's moving in, it, you know, or to speak to, or the intention to speak to your point, I think that, you know, like you said, your wife is very outgoing and friendly. That I think that would have been a much better approach. Um, I'm still uh, with Nate, there's gonna have to be a, a really, and I'm speaking for myself, other people can't agree or disagree with me. There would have to be really clear conditions because you know, my, my concerns are still my concerns. Traffic, um, the comings and goings of people. Um, like I said, the, just the people we don't know come flying up and down, the, you know, that we do, you know, neighbors and whatnot, and your kids and their friends. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I uh, and like Nate, I don't want this to slowly creep into something bigger. And I know oftentimes we start with one vision, and then that goes pretty well, and then it does creep and it does creep. And I am concerned about that. So those are kind of how, I, as long as the parking is in the, you know, as long if we can really iron out really clear. Um, could we, if if there was a sense that I'm the not, community would to agree to it. To. Could we proceed? If well, we, we'll talk a little bit more about that because I'm concerned. My biggest concern, which I, is that you're saying you're going to have a roommate move in, which I have no problem with a roommate moving in, but you cannot have an illegal apartment. No, but a roommate would just be living with us. Right. As long and as that's going to be a car all the time. Who knows? You know, I think this is lower, lower impact. And if I had a sense from the community that I wouldn't do anything that, you know, would any, I, I certainly wouldn't want to move. I am regretting this because I guess I thought, you know, nobody will probably come. It'll be fine. I, I was kind of like when I, I asked one of the neighbors here, I said, and they said, well, we're here for the special permit. And I said, me? You know, like I got nervous. I really did get kind of nervous about it. So I would say if I would be willing to say I won't sell it as a and b I won't. Uh, a lot of the things on this list, like it'll be owner occupied. I won't do it till we own it. Right obviously. Um, I won't rent more than one room. It'll expire when I'm done. Um, I won't be having classes or cooking or anything like that other than breakfast. Um, it'll be residential and there'll only be parking in the driveway. I would be really willing to say all those things. Okay, we'll come back to that. Woody, what, what, what do you have? I actually have uh, 130. Grave Street, but it's not quite in my range of view. But I'm just wondering about this, now it's being called an accessory apartment in back of the house. How much can that be rented out separately, or what are the limits on its usage in terms of the you can, regulations? So it wasn't one of those ones that was built as a caretaker apartment that could never be rented out separately? One would hope it's not an apartment. One would hope there's no kitchenette in there and so forth. Otherwise, it's we better find out if it's on file, or otherwise it's illegal. We received a special permit to do that. And the special permit lapsed, I think, a year or two ago. Um, so it was a caretaker apartment. They received a special permit. Um, but we're just thinking it, of having a roommate or having it, people in there. Has as the kitchenette been removed? 
the they were granted a special permit for a caretaker he's absolutely correct that caretaker apartment automatically expires upon change of ownership because the person in a wheelchair was gone and there was no longer a caretaker okay. right so that and so it's supposed to be renovated isn't that correct under the bylaws it's supposed to be renovated so that, such that it's not a, an apartment correct. it isn't it, there is no kitchen in there it so a little sink. the other thing I'd just like to say to folks uh, to answer some of your question Woody in the town you in the town up to four unrelated not families but people can live in one house so uh, technically uh, if they want to bring a roommate in the oh, there they're legal just that particular arrangement where it seems odd that the bedroom is separate from the rest of the house you have to walk out doors to get to the rest of the house it seems not a normal roommate situation you know, I, I can't you know there's nothing i don't there's nothing in the building codes no or no. or in our bylaws that say it's connected you have is a connected bedroom and as long as it's connected it's connected yeah doesn't say it has to go down a particular hallway. Yes. My question is um, if any of these people in the future would want to sell their property, if that would become an issue because someone has a business on that street, if values go down or anything like that. Hmm. All right. Uh, why don't we... Um, why don't we just we'll we'll deliberate for a minute and then we'll I had a question has she withdrawn her application not well yet. i haven't not, not quite yet. i she, haven't withdrawn it yet not yet because <laughs> i sort of like my neighbors <laughs> so far um, <laughs> can i ask a question about occupancy are there certain rules or guidelines about occupancy of that space or she can have up to four people that are not related live in that house i could even have two roommates then because there's only two of us but i don't want that I just want to ask the park off, off, ask the park yeah. in the garage, and other thing, and she has to deal with all of whatever that is. Thank you. What's the average time that people stay? Two nights. So, any any com any comments to the board? I think we've listened to people and yeah. got some oh. things that they're very interested in. And so I, I from and I'll, and I'll be the vocal one again. Um, I hear two things. One is I hear that uh, some of the public would be okay with conditions and so forth on a B&B. &B. Um, and I hear the scenario on the, um, the renting a room out and so forth, uh, which anybody in the neighborhood technically could do um, as well. I do. I really str feel strongly that you made the wrong move, not moving in and getting to know your neighbors and then mm -hmm. petitioning. Mm -hmm. It really feels like you just crammed it down their throat. Uh, well, I, I I just didn't ex realize yeah, that it was such a. I mean, I've been living up more out in the country. It's, I only know I think two that's neighbors. Different. Yeah. yeah so I think it's a lot when you have a neighbor and River Road. I think it's, it's kind of great, actually, in a funny street. way, even though it's not. These lots water. are. These lots are. I, I know these lots very well. Mm -hmm. I know they're very small. I know they're mm -hmm. compacted. It's purposely was zoned that way when it was zoned way back when. Yeah. And I think that you know, if you have a, if you have uh, a roommate or whatever, and there's noise or whatever, they're gonna have the right to call the police and and have it policed or whatever. Um, I'm gonna call the police if there's noise. So, so the one thing I don't wanna do is, I don't wanna be detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and it, and the, public, the public that's here, and as you said, generally we have one, maybe none, mm -hmm. uh, kinda, and it speaks for itself. No, I'm not concerned. It's great. In a way, it's a positive. It's very positive. We've got to vote on. We've got to vote on things, and we have right. concerned folks here. So, um, and there's people like Mrs. Melick that's lived there for a long, long time mm -hmm. um, on the street. So I'm really perplexed. Mm -hmm. Well, do you, do you think we could have like a five-minute break? What do you? What's your comment? Well, would it be possible to? Uh, 
to not petition for it now would be able to petition for it? Well, oh, she could definitely if she would draw. If she was drooling, she was draws, and she wants to move in and get to know her neighbors and and um, earn some points. I think that that would be good. I mean, uh, it, it would be a good thing. I, I'm not, I'm not sure though. So, but at the flip side, I, I'm going to take a straw poll. In a minute, I'm going to take a straw poll of the neighbors about conditions or not. In, in, in a minute, but just want to make sure the board doesn't have any other uh, comments or issues. I think everything's so, been said. So, yeah. Other than we, if she wants to proceed, she needs to give us the one with the signed. Yeah, I can give you that one. Signature on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's right here. So. This is the Could I just add a comment, please? Yes, Mr. Floyd. Yeah, uh, Dick Floyd again, 63 Gray Street. And uh, the discussion going back and forth between the idea of somebody actually renting a room there versus a B and B. I personally am more comfortable with somebody renting a room because the nature of the neighborhood is people get to know each other. There's no benefit to our neighborhood to having people come there for a night or two night stay that basically we don't get to know at all. We might just say, hi, we, it's a very friendly neighborhood. But the fact of the matter is, um, at this moment in time, uh, and I just want to mention this, Bella, because I want to be honest about my feeling, and uh, that, you know, there's a, an advantage in na the nature of the neighborhood to have somebody who actually get to know. Mm -hmm. So, and that may, uh, go back to your comment as well. In other words, we, we all came here with not knowing the individual at all. Um, and again, I'll point out the fact the house does not fit the neighborhood. And I'm not being critical of the structure itself. I'm simply saying it was built for a specific purpose. And it, it, it's probably twice the square footage of most everything we're talking about that we live in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. I'm just going to ask, ask for a straw vote. I'd ask you, Bella, not to watch them so it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, you know. You can watch it on TV later. I can watch it on TV. So. All right. Let's, let's take a straw poll. How many of you would prefer that she take some time and go back and then come back to us? I guess my, my feelings before, I'm kind of like it, she's saying she's going to do one thing or the other. I mean, I know that you're saying I'm either going to do a bed and breakfast or and I, I'm, this is probably not your intention, but that's the only thing that's making me uneasy. It's kind of like, well, I'm doing one thing or the other. Kind of, I don't want to say a threat, but it's like if I don't get this, then I'm doing that. So well, it's I guess just I, I'm not, the threat's a wrong word. I can't come up with the right word. It's right just now. the economics of it for me right now. Oh, I know because it's a very expensive house. Yeah, it doesn't really exactly. <laughs> But the house is the house. You know, we can't help that. Yeah. And it was your <laughs> choice. Yeah. Yeah about the cost of the home, not our choice. But I mean, the thing is, I can do the one without any. So, so just for, well, address, you had address said, me, please. You had said that it was okay to do the road. I have a roommate, so I will. Well, that's, a, you're, that's by right by law. Yeah, that's a right by the law. Bed, but I'm not bed, trying to be threatening about farm. that. I just think it would be so, better on the neighborhood to do what I want to do. Any other last comments before we could? We're, I thought we were going to be in and out of here in 10 minutes today. <laughs> me too. <laughs> in a bad way. But, uh, Everybody's hungry. And we got another thing to discuss yet. So any other last comments before I? OK. I'm going to give you the opportunity to withdraw, or we're going to go to a vote. And I can, and, and, and I'm I didn't get to see what they did. They, uh, the only, the, you heard the comments. OK. But there's so, no sense of. Uh... My, my sense is. I said before, I don't think you approached the correct Well, way. why don't I withdraw for now, then? Mr. And then you, yeah. Why do you always want to? You know what he does? He Every waits till the end. <laughs> sits back there forever. We ask him questions, the and then at the last second, all of a sudden, he's going to pipe in. That's because he wakes up. Kelsey. Well, she's going to withdraw, mm -hmm. but I, I don't want to ruin the whole scenario. But I agree with this gentleman about a roommate is a better interest at this point than transient okay I disagree with Bella 
that she's going to restrict it to no kids under 12, that's discriminatory and you can't do it. Every B and B I looked at. Well, up, you can't. State do of it. Massachusetts, you can't do that. Okay. On a B and B, I think you can. Well, I'll research that, but I have. Okay. I just don't want. The second thing, the other thing is, everybody's talking about food. Okay. Yeah. Everybody eats. My concern, and I, I'm an advocate of this because I'm a teetotaler. The consumption of alcoholic beverage on that property would be a bigger concern than food. How do you know you don't get a drunk that comes in? So well, my suggestion to you, Bela, would be to follow the lead you've been given. Withdraw. And I would, I would, I'm not echoing what Mr. Kalaszewski says, but the wonderful thing about Gray Street is it is you can walk downtown, and guess what's downtown? Mm -hmm. So you can walk downtown, and you can get folks that go downtown, and you're just going downtown to have a nice meal and have some fun, and then on the way home, what do they do? Go by every single neighbor's house, and they're just yucking it up in the street, not doing anything. But, you know, 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, yucking it up down my street, I can tell you where I am. I'm at the I'm at the window, looking. You know what's going on. So, once again, I would I would I would highly recommend that you can decide what you want to do. But I would have I would have approached it a different way. Well, so, I'll withdraw for now. I think I, I should withdraw for now because I think I need to get to know my neighbors and uh, talk to them more. And now I've met them. Oh, at least I've met many of them and uh, decide sort of as a group whether they would be willing to let me do what I want to do or not. And then I would, this is not, this is my own comment, but having a pool on the property, I'd be scared to death. It has a, did you see the fence around? It has I don't a, even care. A pool is a, a pool is a nightmare. Well. And I can tell you a few stories of them. Okay. So. And will we accept the withdrawal? So, so yes, we'll accept the withdrawal. And I know it costs you a few bucks to. Uh, it's a lot uh, of bucks because I have a lot of neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I think it's the right thing to do. Okay. Honestly. Without prejudice. Yes. Without, without so let's we'll, we'll, we'll take a vote to withdraw. Uh, let uh, Miss Burrell to withdraw her um, without application without prejudice. Without prejudice. And that, what that means is you can come back anytime. So that means uh, I would redo the whole process. You'd redo the whole package, and we'd redo this whole process. Okay. All right. All right. Well, so thank let's, you we're all gonna take a vote. Time. So Ben, I vote to support them. <coughs> Aye. Hi. Linda and myself as well. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you for you. everyone's time. I th and thank you. Okay. I'm doing state now. They were past the cross street. Uh -huh. Okay, so With then the we got some other business. Let's make sure it gets in the yeah. official yeah. file. No, she has not right now. She has the red cap. Well, we have stuff we got to do, but yeah, we got other stuff. But we need to go in a. Oh, hang on, you're, you're, done. you're one ahead of me. All right. Did we have here? Would but, you take the attendance? Oh, we're doing the yes. attendance yeah. on yeah. stuff. But the other thing. Yeah, we hang on, Robert. Give me one second. Let's well, <laughs> you you hang on. I'm going over there. To you go to there and come and back. back. Well, we uh, sign this, these uh, on the B and B paperwork. Do we have a vote? Is there a vote sheet? Oh, you got, is there a vote sheet? Uh, this is the attendance. I put a vote sheet. Maybe they knew there wasn't going to be one. No, 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 no. <laughs> There you go. Nice. So what do we do with this? Do we... Um, we, we can, do, you can write on there somewhere. Uh, Just, uh, withdraw without. Withdrawal without prejudice, and we took a vote on it. Great. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> we still on TV? Yeah, yeah, we're still on TV. Mm. <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna get. We're gonna get there in a second. <laughs> Just wanted you to know. It's a little late. Well, I thought it was pretty 
putting the microphone away, I would no. say. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right down, just right on the bottom. Oh, okay. I'm not. Listed. Yeah, we're getting listed there. <laughs> Do you need help? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> no, we're gonna go into the room. But I'm gonna I gotta do some <laughs> stuff ahead of time. Robert, if you could sign this. Yes, I will. That would be wonderful. We don't want that on in there though. We're going into the room in a minute. Yeah. Okay. I think that should Thank you. Be... You know I didn't bring a pen, Richard. right? Right, I knew that. But sorry. Richard. Let me let me do the the motion stuff. <sighs> well, we can put that with the file. Okay. And you have the I've got what I need. You've yeah. got the zoning board this I've got that in. Yeah. Okay. I want to look at this wording on All this right. thing. All right. So, um, our next order of business is to go into executive session to discuss an ongoing litigation in the matter of the Baronis versus the Deerfield Zoning Board of Appeals um, over uh, Franklin Court Civil Action 1678CV00007 and um, have a discussion Thank you. with the chair. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, the effects just, upon the board's bargaining position. We can so, also talk about other possible pending litigation. Yes. So, uh, pending litigation, I want to take a roll call vote to go into executive session. Mm -hmm. So, Ben, how do you vote to go into session? I vote that we go into session. Linda? We go into executive session. Yeah. Mr. Decker? And also, Ron, we go into the executive session. We also have to say whether or not we intend to come back after we're done, whether we're going to be in open session or we're going back into... Uh, we will come back and we will go into session and then we will go uh, to... to um, Whatever uh, we have to do. End the meeting or whatever. Okay. Okay. So with that, we're going to go into an executive session. Mm -hmm.